Hello, and this is a book review and some interesting ideas, favorite ideas that I found in this book, Traffic, Why We Drive the Way We Do. I'll start with a review. This is a fucking good book. Uh, definitely a five star. Lots of information packed with information, which I love. Very valuable information. I learned a lot about traffic. I didn't know. It's always something we do, we do every day, but we don't really pay attention as much. Uh, for what's going on and how does it work? So again, I learned a lot. Didn't didn't see too many books about this subject. So again, I learned a lot, and I definitely recommend this book. Five stars. Now there's a lot of notes, which usually tells how much I learned. So let's see. First one is traffic is an old problem. In Rome, they had serious traffic problems. So it's going back to the days even in Rome to have they had traffic problems. This is not a new thing. Fortunately, we did not solve this problem yet. Drive until you qualify means that people live uh, live farthest from the city in order to qualify for a mortgage. I like this. Drive until you qualify. It's kind of a real estate agent's idea. You drive until you can qualify. Uh, because the farther you go from the city, usually it's cheaper. So drive until you qualify. I like this idea. One of the reasons that the other lane moves faster is because we spend more time looking at that lane that moves faster than we move faster. We usually, this is why you think, always think that the other lane moves faster because we spend time looking at it because we are stuck in, when we're stuck in traffic, we look on the other lane. We don't do the same. When we drive, we don't look on our, on our lane and say, oh, we drive. We don't do that. Only when we stop, we look on the other lane. Oh, they're moving now. And so we look, we don't have enough data in some way. Late merging is better since it utilizes the whole space of the road. People think, oh, late merging is just uh, your asshole or whatever, but many times is actually utilizing more of the whole road because there is space will not, and we should use it. So more cars can fit the road. Having the traffic light blink before changing the color could produce more accidents because there are more decisions to make now. So where I grew up, uh, there is before the traffic light go red. So it's first of all, it's the, the green start flashing and then goes to uh, yellow and then red. And according to studies, what it caused actually more accidents because usually you would say, oh, it's actually caused less because they know when the light, uh, when you can stop, when you should not cross, you should prepare to stop. But many times it's just more decisions. And apparently we're not such good in making decisions. Number of people that say the world, quote, the world will be a better place if I rule the world, end quote, is rising. So there is more people that say that that if that if I'll be I'll rule the world rule the world is on the rise, which is kind of an interesting and we can see that on the road too. People think they're on the road. Side note, the part about autonomous cars is not necessarily related and is not as good. So just like on a side note, it's not as good this part about autonomous cars. Uh, I guess it, maybe the maybe this book it was a little old, so it's kind kind of like a lot changed since then. And I wasn't sure how it's related. Ru rule, should be a come after that, but rule two lanes are known as the most dangerous roads. So those two lanes, one to each way, are the most dangerous road because usually if uh, there is an accident, it's face to face and it's uh, lots, has much more force and momentum. Next one is, it's known that people who give interviews while driving are not doing well. There is many people that do that, but um, given interviews and it's a known thing that they just don't give good uh, interviews because you have more things to, to, to care about. So you're not, your mind is not fully on the interview. <clears throat> Sorry. When we talk on the phone, we think we still drive well because the lack of bad feedback. So when we, we talk on the phone, we just, oh, it was totally fine. But the thing is that we don't know if it was totally fine because we don't get bad feedback. Which bad feedback would be just getting into an accident. We, the fact that you didn't get into an accident doesn't mean that you drive well. Some other people could fix your, ba your bad uh, 
moves, but because you didn't get you didn't get the bad bad feedback, uh, feedback, uh, you think you, you drove well, which is not necessarily true. And more experienced drivers see more details on the road instead of focusing only on their lane. So the more experienced the driver is, we uh, we tend to see more details on the road instead of focusing only on your lane. So this is like you start usually just on your lane, but the more experienced you are, your your, your mind can ex not explore, but expand a little more and see more things. You can see more lanes. You can see what happens on their side of the lanes. So in some way, you, you, you're less likely to get into an accident. Highways are designed to feel like we are not driving as fast, such as uh, things such as dividers and big signs and the lane indications. That was kind of interesting. So it's actually designed because we have, we're actually driving quite fast. It's like well, driving about 70 miles per hour and that's quite fast. And they actually engineer those highways to not look like we drive as fast. So there is the, the dividers are bigger, the signs are bigger, because if you have smaller signs, you will uh, go through them very fast. I think the most important one is the lane indications. So there is, there is like this uh, between the lanes. So how long is the line? If, if it's too short, like it's in the city, those are shorter. So if you will have the same, you will feel like you go very fast. So they make them longer. So you you'd think you don't go as fast. People who drive long time on highways tend to drive faster on rural roads. It's similar to the treadmill effect, which is what you feel after running a long time. So after we run in a treadmill for a long time, sometimes we go off and we think we're still going uh, faster when then we go. Uh, same things happens to people that drive on, on highways and then go to rural roads. And what happens, they just drive faster because they think, uh, and they, don't assess the speed right. You think they're actually going slower than they are. Because they, they still go slower than the, on the highway. That's why they think, oh, I'm actually going slower because they go slower than the highway, but not stop yet. It's not slow enough, if that makes sense. We are bad at estimating how fast we drive since it depends on the environment such as trees, and etc. Sometimes, and they did a lot of studies about it, how fast you go. And sometimes we think we're good at estimating, but we're actually pretty bad because it really depends in what environment you're going. So if there is a lot of trees, how big are the trees? And uh, it's really depends. It's kind of connected also to, to the one before that we were bad at estimating. This is one of the reasons why. Traffic flow on the highway is similar to a bucket of water with a hole. The flow of water is smoother when there is less water coming in. That's one of the problem with uh, traffic. There is many cars that try, trying to go at the same time. So this is just, just like pouring a lot of water to a bucket when like a small hole. So usually if it's like a smooth drip by drip, it will go uh, out faster than if you pour a lot of water at once. Roundabouts are actually better than traffic lights or stop signs because we don't get green all the time. That's why roundabouts is actually better than traffic lights because sometimes you think, oh, but I'm gonna get I'm gonna get green. No, you're not gonna get green all the time, or you're not gonna get into the stop sign first all the time. So you're usually gonna wait. In roundabouts, you don't wait unless there is other people there. Or there is more people also can go at once. When too many cars merge into the highway, they try to merge into the first lane, which eventually makes people move to the other lane and so on. That's what usually cause congestion. It's not just the highway, it just slows down. Usually it's the merging or when you go out. So people that merge, they will try to merge to the first lane. And after the first lane, they're trying to move to the, the lane next to it and so on. And that's cause congestion because everyone needs to slow down for them. One, one way to stop, to prevent, sorry, one way to prevent stop and go traffic is to not accelerate to occupy the empty space instead of 60, drive 30, for example. So sometimes there is like stop and go traffic is there is like there is construction and then we, we drive. It happens in many, many 
uh, highways. It just there is like you drive for maybe five or ten miles per hour, and then you we go all, all the way to sixty. One of the ways to prevent that stop and go traffic is to not speed all the way to sixty. So instead of sixty, drive thirty. Uh, don't try to occupy the whole space because this is what caused the stop and go. Everyone is like pressing all the way to sixty, and then everyone ha uh, have to brake, and those are dangerous brakes that cause many accidents. Humans all around the world, in all kinds of developed stages, are looking for about one hour commute. Back in the days, it meant an hour around your cave. This is what we kind of uh, engineered to have about one hour commute. And again, it's, uh, they did some studies, it's all around the world and in many stages of development, uh, country development. So this is usually, and people don't want to just don't want to have more. They, they condensed uh, about that. And even back in the cave times, uh, that was probably meant uh, one hour around, which is you like, tend to explore around your cave. Traffic is a result of affluent people that have the mean to travel places other than the workplace. So that's the result of traffic, which is usually caused by affluent people that just have the money uh, and the mean uh, to travel places other than the, for the workspace, which cause more congestion. congestion. Starbucks often design their drive throughs it's there. <laughs> uh, so the other drive, so the drivers won't have to make a left turn. A left turn known to take more time than a right, especially here in America, uh, because you can take that on a red many times. So Starbucks sometimes design their drive throughs that more people don't have to take left turns. I'm not 100% sure, uh, sure how they do that because all corners are that way, but I can, can think of some ideas. We are looking for parking similar to how animals hunt. Some drive around until they found a spot, while others wait at the top of the road waiting to someone to go out. I mean, like the similarities between the two. So the way we, we look for parking, it's similar to how animal hunt or how we used to hunt. Some people just waiting, some to go out on one spot, just like waiting. And other people are constantly going all the roads, which is like, can be like hunting, which is, will be like active hunting, which is like you're, you're going, you're going until you find your prey. So I like this, this uh, the similarities. Free and meter parking cause congestion because people prefer parking there and drive more to find those spots. So that's what's the result of free or meter parking because usually it's cheaper than a garage, for example. What happens is people drive more to find those places because they're cheaper, which means that they're on the road more. New roads attract more cars that wouldn't not go otherwise. Less road, however, does not diverting cars to other roads in the same proportion. So people suggest build more road. The problem is with, the, with build, building more roads is that new roads attract more cars and wouldn't go otherwise. Literally, people go places more, there is more roads. There is less traffic, people just go more. And there's more traffic, people sometimes just stay at home. The other end, less roads, if you just cancel one of the roads, uh, does not divert cars to other roads at the same proportion as new roads bring more cars, which is interesting. Traffic is the same as in restaurants. You don't want to eat in an empty restaurant. And LA has a lot of traffic. So traffic is kind of like the same as restaurant. Um, because if, if it, there is an empty road or empty restaurant, usually people don't want to go there. That's one of the reasons why LA has so much traffic because everyone want to go there. It's like kind of a, a very popular restaurant. Adding more lanes to an in intersection has a diminishing return since everything takes longer. So usually all the same, just add more lanes so more people can turn right, more people can turn left, but usually it has a diminishing return, which means that uh, usually just a counterproductive since everything takes longer because when there's more lanes, 
more people need to you need more lights to give so there is like everyone has a light to go left that's more time that everyone takes in taking left turns instead of driving driving straight so sometimes it has a diminishing returns disney is in the traffic business similar to cities since they need to engineer the flow of people so not all go to the most popular places so disney also i think they have like uh, traffic engineers or people that at least work in, in traffic engineering because it's a, it's a very similar to cities because they want they don't want all people to go to the most popular spot so they have to uh, find or engineer the place in order to prevent that from happening same similar to cities you don't want everyone to go to the same spot which it sometimes happens like downtowns for example but still they try to divert uh people to go to more places adding more space on rides means that on most days of the year it will be empty you don't design a church for easter sunday so that's what's happening in in disney for example uh just people say just have more rides uh add more uh blocks what happens is that if you add more which means most days uh, of the year it will be empty so you don't design a church only to occupy everyone at easter sunday you design for average day, uh, average day self-destroying prognosis is what happens in the stock market for example if everyone would know the stock market will rise tomorrow it would no longer rise tomorrow so that's the idea of self-destroying prognosis um, because if everyone would know what's what and that it's going to rise tomorrow it's not, no, no longer going to rise because it's going to rise today uh, that's the idea i like this idea when you feel safe it's probably not as safe and when you feel unsafe it's probably safe most accidents happens on the on the highway during the day to sober people many people think oh i feel safe right now but many times when you feel safe it's not safe uh, especially considering uh, statistics and when you feel unsafe it could be safe so for example you drive at the on a highway but it could be very 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 uh very dangerous because many people down the highway but if you drive on like a, some kind of a roller road you feel very unsafe it could actually be safe because there is not a lot of cars and you drive slow most accidents happens to highway during the day to sober people so that's kind of like the statistics and we don't we don't think that more pedestrians getting killed crossing a marked crosswalk than jaywalking and this is kind of a sad so more people uh, people oh jaywalking is very dangerous but actually more people are getting killed on a crosswalk humans are terrible at finding gaps to merge that's one of the main problems people have they don't, they don't know when is the safe time to go sometime out of the suicide lane for example or just even merging to a highway and you think it's safe but it's unsafe and they're really terrible at finding those gaps side note the author argues that road should should indicate how fast you should go the problem is that some places cannot be redesigned or it's too expensive so the idea is that he argues that sometimes the road should indicate how fast you can go they have all kinds of uh engineering tricks to show you how fast you can go so if you there is more if there's a lot of curbs for example it means uh, you just don't see farther so you just usually we tend to drive slower so that's what he argues for but that problem i think is that sometimes it's a kind of a money problem you don't we don't have the money to to design every road uh, so people can understand what's going on it's safer to ride a scooter in rome than in the u.s since people are expecting scooters so in rome there's a lot of scooters so it's much safer to ride ride a scooter there than in the u.s in which people do not expect them people mostly obey the law because they think it's right therefore in countries where the justice systems is working more people obey the law so people obey the law because they think it's right and not because they obey the law because they need to obey the law so that the, therefore in countries where the justice system is working where people obey the law because they see it works don't veer when you see a deer sounds even good it's mostly more dangerous people sometimes veer when they see a deer and sometimes they go off the road 
or get into a more uh, problematic situation. Sometimes it's just better to just hit the deer. Sorry. Uh, there is a 1 to 100 chance to die in a car accident, in car accident within a lifetime. So it's 1 to 100 chance in a whole lifetime. You have a 1 to 100. It's not that uh, high. It's not that low, actually, uh, to, to die in a car accident. So one, ever, one in other people, in a hundred people would die in a car accident. Fatal accidents rates are lower in congestion, congestion time. Usually is the consequence of uh, lower speeds. Speeds and fatality of a U-shaped curve. Low and high speeds is more fatal, usually a consequence of a variance between cars. So the speed and fatality, if you go, if you put both on the X and Y axis, they have a U shape curve. It's going like as a U. The low and high speeds are more fatal. So there's there's a diet like the, the edges of the U. There is I fatality rates on low and high speeds. And the reason is usually it's a consequence of a variance between cars. So if you drive very fast, there is cars that drive slow, you hit them, you're more likely to die. Or if you drive very slow, most cars drive fast, you're more likely to die. Just a small amount of alcohol correlates with low accident rate. It's possibly because the drivers are aware of the risk and they don't want to get pulled over. That was actually interesting. So if you drink, drink just, uh, just a little bit, I forget the exact number, but probably one to two beers, probably more than you should, a little more than you should, but you actually drive safer because you are afraid to get pulled over. So you drive safer than a normal driver. Most people who not wear seatbelt are involved in accidents and that's why they die more often, but it's risky behavior more than the belt. So that's what I'm here is that most people who do not who do not wear seatbelt are involving more accidents. And that's why they die more. So it could be that people that do not wear seatbelt are actually not die because they don't wear the seatbelt. It's because they are just more reckless in general. So those people that don't wear seatbelt drive, drive more dangerously and this is, could be the reason why they die more. But it's risky behavior more than the belt. That's what he claims, that it's more than the way they drive more recklessly uh, than the actual belt. When vehicles are getting safer, people use them more dangerously since they know about the risk. So the more, the more and more uh, safer our car gets, people drive it more and more risk, are more at risk because they think they would be saved, which sometimes is true. It's more safer than ever. So that's why people drink, uh, drive them more crazy. And that was the last one. So that's it for notes. Again, very good book, five stars. Uh, definitely recommending. Um, learned a lot about traffic, a lot, a lot of notes. And uh, kind of interesting, I didn't saw it. I was like looking to more books about this subject, but there is not enough and I think should be more. Uh, it's a fascinating topic. And thank you.